Good evening and welcome to the Town of Acton Selectman's meeting for January 12th, 2016. First item on the agenda, a salute to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of the agenda. I move we approve the agenda. Seconded. All in favor? Approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I move that we approve the minutes of the last meeting. Seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Department head, committee chair updates. Um, okay, it's up to you. Okay. So uh, I hope that it's okay. I did the agenda a little bit differently this week and I think that it would be easier um, so the board can really have more input on where some of the old business things um, start. So anything that, that I have an actual update on, I'm going to put in under me, but if it's something that's just continue, continued over from last week because we haven't completed it yet, we'll put it under old business and the chair can um, kind of keep it moving along. Okay. Um, <clears throat> first thing I have is the speed limit updates. Last week, uh, Deputy Shaw and I met with Tim Susi from Maine DOT. He actually came down to Acton and the three of us had a meeting. Um, based on the December 11th, 14 letter that you guys sent him listing out all of the streets, uh, he went through all of them and with Deputy Shaw, they agreed on speed limits and they discussed the placement of the signs. And I guess I really wanna mention that because although we will ask our road commissioners to put them in, the these guys have actually picked the spot so we want to make sure that the board is okay with taking their recommendation not to say the road commissioners are going to be any different i think we had to that's why we had to call them in the, the state tells us where to put them and what the speed limit is and then we, and then the town puts the signs up, puts the signs up. Okay. We, we don't get to make that determination so okay so he um we have probably close to 25 maybe even 30 signs to purchase um there are a couple of sign, a couple of areas that he wants, um, you know, particular arrows going for either sharp bends or there's a particular area that I, I don't recall what road it's on, but he felt like he was just about going to land in the water, so he wanted a left-hand one. So we have it all um, all spelled out. You talking and like curb signs? We're curb signs, yeah. No, okay. So <clears throat> with your approval, um, we'll order these. Now, in the past, they've come out of the road commissioner's individual budgets that for their roads um, we have a miscellaneous municipal management fund that because the road commissioners didn't request these I asked Michelle to find a different account with your okay um, that we can you know legally take them out of and go ahead and get them ordered and um, a motion to buy the signs I move we buy the signs seconded all in favor okay so hopefully I don't know what the best weather to install those signs but I'll talk to both of the guys and see what they can do to help us get those installed once they're in. Um, next thing, kind of a follow up from last week, some things that you asked me for, um, set a budget date. I did, I did talk to Michelle and she is um, good with the third Friday in February. And I apologize, I had to look at my calendar. So we'd be looking at the 19th as the deadline for budgets and with your approval uh, we'll send out she'll send out a memo indicating that um, in regards to the salaries that you asked me to look into yeah some information um, from her so <clears throat> first of all regarding the the fire department estimating what the fire department needs in the salary is pretty tough right now there's no base point and there hasn't been clear direction set as to how shifts will be covered by full-time personnel or per diem personnel or what the fire chief is going to make um, basically more information is needed before she can put that forward and her thought um, you know as we were kind of talking about it she pointed out a good you know a good point that you know if we don't have these positions filled yet let's just say it's february or march before we get them filled mm -hmm. quite honestly they're not going to be looking at increases in june right so you know what i mean so we really don't that doesn't have to affect this year's budget because you know most people don't get an increase after three or four months on the job so well, I was thinking more along, on along the lines, too, that this past year, because we didn't know if they were going to pass the budget for the new ambulance, that we put in a fire department budget and a fire ambulance budget. Right. So there's an extra amount of money. She said there would there certainly be a good amount of money yeah. being rolled over into undesignated funds from the fire department. Okay. Um, but she's still looking for information as far as what the fire chief, you know, what the salary is going to be. 
Uh, I know we had talked about, you know, the stipend that the prior chief got along with what they budgeted. So depending on qualifications, you'll be right around that 50000 mark plus benefits. Yeah, we'll um, negotiate with whoever we decide okay. to hire after they go through the interview process. Okay. So then in regards to the other positions, um, so increasing all salaries by 3% with the exception of the fire department is about $10,000 increase for approximately 15 positions. However, we're not buying an $8,000 boat this year, so really it's only about 2000 the increase does not even affect the tax rate by a quarter of a cent, about a half a cent if we don't, even if we didn't factor in the boat. Okay. So in this memo that we're um, putting out, what is it that we're telling the department heads? Well, we gave them 3% last year. Do you want to do the same? Yeah. Yeah, I would All think. Right. Do, tell them to budget in the same. I know the school's going through negotiations now. I don't know what the teachers are going to get. They, they can't even start their budget because they haven't finished the contracts for the next three years yet. So. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing I just wanted to, the capital improvement piece, um, just to kind of follow up a little bit, because we are starting to work on the warrant. Um, Michelle did speak to uh, Ken Paul, who estimated the remainder of the siding on, this, on the whole building at about $40,000. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's one if you decide you don't need to decide tonight roof i did speak to hall brothers today and uh, they're going out and take a look at it um for the fire department for the fire department so they're going to actually give you a quote on both of them i know that the new building i don't think needs it but they'll keep them separated so he said we'd have that by next week okay um and then the walkway i did uh, play phone tag with joe letourneau again yesterday but he assured me in my message that um i would hear from him before the end of the week so those will be individual warrant articles. Is that how you wanted it? Yeah, and I'm hoping that there's some money in the um, in the fund, um, capital improvement fund, to go towards either the siding or the front walkway or something like that. And I was thinking we should also increase our maintenance budget by 5,000 because of all the expenses that we've had that have come up with um, parts of the other parts of the building that we hadn't planned on, you know, library, all the things that come up. So. We have what 15? Uh, it's 25, but that includes the uh, all the contracts, no shoveling, the, the cleaner, grass. and all that. So we end up usually with like fifteen thousand dollars to maintain the whole building. So right. that would give us 20. So mm -hmm. ask Michelle to put it probably in, not a bad idea, yeah. An additional five thousand because I know their heater keeps going too, and yep. eventually we're going to have to put those heaters yep. like we did downstairs. So and the uh, capital improvement account has forty thousand dollars in it, okay? So we can take some we can ask the town to take some from there to do the siding and then we just have to ask for money that go in the tax rolls to do the front entrance to the library okay good that's all i have that's it okay um any uh, you have anything for us we're just doing department heads right now yeah. no um just in regards there was a question we had the about the cip program i talked to peter about that three years ago um he came to you and saying, you know, let's look ahead and everything. So well, there should be money in a CIP program for the fire department for uh, that roof somewhere, unless things fell through okay. the cracks somewhere. So Well, M Michelle would know yeah. where it is, so we so, can ask her. But um, I, I asked him, he said, no, every year. And that was one of the things he always put in his budget the last three years was knowing that was going to be coming along. So it would be a little bit easier of a sting when the time comes. So, so yeah, definitely look into that. Yeah, I was just thinking we just, we're just going to have the town hall completely finished next year, and, and if we get that done, then we've got 20 years before we have to do anything unless something breaks yep. down. So yep. that would be great. And we're pushing 16 years over there now. So Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you said the backside gets more sun, so it's starting yes. to yep. fold up and everything. Yep. Yeah. So, so yep. maybe change the backside this year and then wait the 20 years to change the front. Probably something there, yep. yeah. Do something there. But, yep, nope, there should be money in a CIP program somewhere, so. Okay. Okay. Um, TDL drug testing memo continuation. So per your request, um, I am still looking into different time clocks. I did find um, a company out of Westbrook, probably one of the only ones in Maine that do um, very – very um, eccentric time clocks. I do them for, for all types of companies. Uh, the gentleman salesman is going to come down on Friday and talk to me about it. Um, but basically, I explained to him um, what I thought we were looking for. I don't know if you want to elaborate a little more on the conversation you and I had. Yeah, what I was thinking we should do because of this issue with the CDL drug testing and the, and the time clocks, 
um, and we're already using time clocks at the transfer station as we put, and now we're going to have the fire department with all these people working there. We put everybody that's an hourly uh, rate goes on a time clock. Um, all the school employees that are on an hourly rate, all the ed techs and the janitors and all that, they have to punch a time clock mm -hmm. every day. And that way we could have one at the transfer station, one at the fire station, and where was the other one? Town hall. Uh, one at the town hall. Um, and it would not just be road people, it'll be everybody, or the, fire, the firefighters. And the time clock, I imagine once we get this up, is, is, it, is the fire station already open 24 hours a day now? Is, there some, is it manned 24 hours a day? Um, probably close right now for the month of January, probably 90% of the time. Okay, and um, when you guys go out to a call, do you lock it all up? Yes. You do, yeah, okay, yeah. so, it, all right, so you know, they, it would have to be, they could go there if it, if it was open, but if not, then they could come to the town hall and do it. So as Oh, you mean as yeah, the road if you've got, if you're not yes. out on a call, then anybody could just pull in and use the time clock yeah. there. So they would, they yeah, because for the road, everybody for the would road have, a, have an ID number. Yeah, they'll so have it doesn't a matter where you punch, where somebody were to punch in, because it's just going to go to their ID number. So. Yeah, we're hoping yeah. that everybody will have a card and they just slide their card every yep. day. And, and then nobody will have to do timesheets anymore or, or be payroll for work Michelle. It'll go right to Michelle. Can, so it'll, yep. make, it'll clean the whole system up. It's, everybody, yep. She won't have to wait until Tuesday for payroll. She'll have it on yep. Monday morning. Yeah, everything, you know, follow that right through with a data track program or something. And it's, yep. it, it would be. It's, it's time that we go that way, especially like you were saying with, with the personnel coming on and, and the stipends and all that stuff and and uh, that would be the people that would affect <coughs> on the fire department and would be you know the stipend personnel and the two full-time people yeah i think stipends you may still have to write that down because if they go directly to the fire they're not going to have time well when they work when they work a stipend they're at the station oh they don't get paid when they go to the fire no then okay. we also now <coughs> okay per diem yep yep well that's what i mean you're, yeah. you're per diem people they're yeah. there that's i have two on now they're per diem people Right, but the now, stipends we don't do, they don't separate. punch in or so anything. So, if, for if that. right That's now we would hours. have a call and I had 20 people show up, we have a log report and everybody gets checked off. That's still going to stay there because that's that's. We still have to do it the old-fashioned way. So you don't need to change that. No, we so. won't change it. The only thing that we'd be changing would be would be the two full-time people would be punched on a punch clock, and then also your your uh, per diem people. Okay. So then we'd be able to track that with everything. So. so what do you think? That sound like a good idea? That way everybody that's a wage, uh, an hourly wage earner will have to use a time clock. Yeah. What are the three locations? Tool shed or uh, the uh, salt shed and the town hall? and. Uh, not the salt shed. No? Because uh, you said they had to have a um, <coughs> wireless a wireless connection. So It's going to have a Wi-Fi. Okay. Yeah. So the fire department has one, the transfer station has one, and we have one. So. Um, we'd have to put a phone and everything else in there. Transportation has Wi-Fi. And right now they're using the old plug-in one. Telef he, they're using telephone? No, they're, no, the old plug-in time clock that you just stamp down, it just oh, plugs whoa, 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 whoa. in. But um, They don't have internet access up there? No, no. no. But they have, they have a phone line and everything, so it'd be a lot easier than putting... Everything. Yeah, and, and there may be um, something that, that we can purchase. You may eventually be able to, you may be able to put one at the Sand and Salt building as well. That okay. gentleman's going to give us some more options come Friday, but I didn't want to get too far into it unless the whole board was. Um, yeah, I definitely so, think the time clock is about the only way to go. So, so I'm going to meet with him Friday, and, and I'll have more information to present to you on Tuesday. I mean, we're still looking about at a couple of weeks out to, you know, put something like this together, and I guess. In the um, meantime, I, th I think you should just go ahead with your testing the way we've done it and you know as far as when you get somebody that you have to test then just call them in like we have before knowing that we have no idea if they're on safety sensitive and it yeah i mean it's the way it's always been done since we started this drug program so we'll continue that and we're making a change as soon as we can but we can't stop the drug testing because you're getting you're getting people's names, correct? I am getting people's names. Yeah. Um, so we, we have to continue it until we can get this in place. Okay. The, um, and I spoke to, to Mr. Uh, Attorney Warren today. He called to kind of follow up to see that where, where that was going. And, you know, the only thing that kind of came up, the concern is that in the winter time, let's say, for example, um, you know, the road, let's just say one of the road commissioners were only working, you know, that there aren't, there isn't winter work. I don't know what they do in the winter, but let's say there's no winter work except for the plowing. So, you know, he's going to punch in when it's plowing and I've got, let's just say I have one of their names. The only time that they're punching in is going to be when it's snowing because they don't do, you know what I mean? Because what they tell me is that there's not a lot of other work that's being done, you know what I mean, in the winter time. So then we're going to be into the situation that I'm going to be pulling them when 
they're out plowing because that's when it's going to be so i mean there you know it, weeks could go by if it doesn't snow during the day that you're you're sitting on a name because i'm waiting for them this particular individual to punch in so i don't you know what i mean i don't know how we're going to handle that don't really have any other choice right now until we get the time clock but no but i'm saying place. once the time clock is in place yeah. what if there's no work other than plowing yeah they're going to have to go when it's snowing. They're going to get taken off the road to go. That they will. You have 30 days, though, to do this, right? I have 30 days, yes. But what I'm saying is that there's no regular winter work. Yep. And where we haven't had any snowstorms yet. I mean, <laughs> a couple looking of at sanding the, jobs, right? Right, but they don't, I don't think they want to be called out when it's, they're sanding either. I mean, they're taking away from... I just, and, and actually, that wasn't during the day because it was so warm during the day. That was during the night, so that wouldn't have helped us anyways. Yeah, so and, and we're just going to have to keep doing it the way we're doing it until we can get the time clocks in. And then okay. if we can't get somebody during a month that they've been called, we'll have to tell them that they have to go and get it done because we have to maintain that. I mean, that's federal law. Okay. Um, fire chief opening? Uh, just a reminder or update, I guess, uh, the deadline is tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Um, as of now, I have nine applications. Oh, that's great. Good. Did it get on that website that went out of the state? Yes. Yeah, okay. Did we get applications from out of state? Yes. Wow. Um, fire, rescue, consolidation update, and committee. Sure, I can give you a quickie on that. Uh, we set up a meeting for this Thursday at 6 o'clock to get the committee together. Uh, we have just one individual. We had two individuals for the seventh position. Uh, it's we had two. It's down to one. Uh, one of the individuals has pulled his name oh. due to some health reasons. And uh, so it's down to one. We, all, we are meeting with that one at 6.30, the committee is. And we'll hopefully if all goes well, we'll have our seventh member, and then we're off and running. The deadline will be past the deadline. Uh, we'll have all the uh, all the paperwork for everyone that submitted. We'll hand that out to the board members and go from there and set up another meeting for the following week. I say, I believe. So I should have the um, enough copies made for your net for Thursday. You want to give them out Thursday night? I think so. Yeah. There's, I don't. There's, there's no sense. I don't think prolonging it. Once we have that seventh member, right? Everybody can take it home as homework and. Yeah, and I just and urge the the reminders of the personnel yes. here and yep. you know yep. how it's all yeah it's all personal information confidential <sighs> yeah sensitive information and the yep. other thing is on that first meeting if you can get a whole schedule of meetings so that you can do all nine of them to Jennifer so she yep. can call up and make time for them to come in and see you guys definitely yeah, yeah. I was saying we definitely need to go through her office your office to get that. You want me to schedule the yeah, interviews? Yeah, schedule the interviews. I think that's the best way to do it. So if you can give her a schedule of when your meetings yeah. are, and then she can call them and see who can come on which night, that would yeah. be great. And then we yeah. get all nine of them done as soon yeah. as possible. I, mean, I don't know whether we'll interview all nine. I would think that I would think out of nine there must be one or two in there that you know we may just look at it and say it doesn't meet the qualifications. I don't know. Hopefully they're all good. You know? So about nine, that's great. It's probably more than I had hoped to have. So. And cons consolidation, we just have the meeting on the 23rd, right? Uh, 26. 26. 26, yes. Um, I did speak to Jennifer Scotto. Nothing really, really new there. We're just waiting for um, waiting for that date to come and go so that we can proceed. Uh, Bill Contanzi has given me all of the drafts that he's looking to have um, signed and wanted our attorney to look at um, as far as the takeover of everything and how it's spelled out. So we're working on that. So they'll sign after the vote and then the paperwork will come to us to sign and then we'll be done? I'm, I believe they'll sign, yes. Okay. Well, that's great. Oh, my favorite, abandoned properties. Um, attorney, attorney Lankowski was in a day or two ago um, and had me um, fill out and attest to some true some documents that, that they came out of the town of Acton zoning ordinance um, because these these properties that we are calling abandoned that the code enforcement is trying to essentially get them to clean up um, 
the force is, is because of the zoning. So anyways, we attested to some documents. Um, I have here the two land use citations and complaints from the town of Acton as a plaintiff versus the two uh, defendants, and they have been um, filed in court. So I will keep you posted. All righty. Um, warrant special projects, we already did that, right? Articles update, we've got to change articles on the warrant. Um, well, I just wanted to make sure that, so special projects, that was the January 28th deadline, right? Yeah. And yeah, the articles update, I think I meant to kind of put that twice for the capital improvement, so I just want to make sure I knew what you wanted, so okay. I think I'm all set there. All right, and we will, well, after the 26th, we will only have one article for the fire department instead of two this year. Correct. Okay. Winter sand, this is about our assault shed not being ready yet. We got it up and um, it's, No, I haven't spoken to Miss. Well, I spoke to Mr. Winchell today, but that didn't come up. But I, I did um, sp spoke to Ken earlier, and he they haven't had any communications yet, so I didn't know if you had an update or. Okay, I'll, I'll get in touch with uh, Dave and Scott and find out what's going on, especially with this storm coming in this weekend because it doesn't take long to put it back together. And 2013 foreclosure notices. Hopefully, you're going to tell me you got a whole bunch of people came in and paid this week. Um, we are down from 20 to, I believe, 17. Oh. And there's still two weeks, so. All right. And you guys had a DM meeting? How'd that go? Yes. Uh, it, went, <clears throat> it went okay. Uh, there's a fellow that, uh, I guess he works for the state. An English gentleman. At any rate, he came up with uh, a proposal uh, that is going to be discussed now. Basically, they're talking about removing a section of the spillway here, uh, which is going to stabilize, according to them, the, uh, the water levels and so forth. Uh, They've gone back out to the four people that responded to the original request for a proposal. And uh, they're going to spend an hour with each one of these uh, four outfits to uh, determine what other problems exist and everything uh, as they go forward. Right now, they don't have any idea of cost or anything. Uh, the high price for uh, for the uh, um, the uh, uh, what do you call it? I can't. Engineering. Huh? Engineering. The engineering. Yeah. The yeah. The. Uh, was it thirty grand or something? Yeah, uh, eighty grand. Eighty was, was the high one. So um, there's a there's a lot of lot of things that have to be discussed, and that's all going to happen uh, on the twelfth of February. All right, so we should plan on, well, we already have an article in there to put 5000 a year into the right. dam anyway, so we don't have to do another article. We can just increase that this year once we know what our share is going to be, right? Yeah, we have 17000 plus in there right now, but uh, that's not going to be anywhere near enough for a lot of these For things. our share, yeah, I mean, it, it, well, and that's just for the engineering. Then we've got to come up with money to help repair it afterwards. Oh, right? Yeah. yeah, right, right, right. But right now they're working on with this uh, Tony. Uh, what's his name? I don't know what happened here. How many years have we been paying on the fire truck? Is it two? I believe so. And we got three more years on that, and we just started five years on the salt shed. So we're probably not going to want to borrow this. No. So at any rate, that's uh, the next step will be the uh, February 12th for interviewing these four companies. Okay. And at that point, then they'll have a much better idea of what we're talking about money-wise. Okay, and let Michelle know what it is because she'll have to put it into right. the Warren article. So. Right. All right, you have anything else, Jen? No, sir. All right, anybody have any new business? Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Um, I'd like to start off by um, 
talking about a, a very nice lady, resident of town, uh, Mrs. Snyder. Uh, as you know, uh, she likes to stand up for what's right and what she believes in. And uh, as you also know, uh, she brought this up at town meeting and she did end up having her land surveyed and it did end up being uh, that she was right about what she was saying. And the only downside to the fact that, that fact is that I'm the proud owner of four more acres of swale. <laughs> uh, <laughs> which which uh, is fine. Uh, apparently owned it all all along anyway. So oh, she must love you. <laughs> and uh, no, she she was happy with me. She did it, tell you we abated it, right? Uh, no, she's uh, since uh, she said that you were going to. We abated we it three did. years we back. It last week. We only had okay. to go one year back. We went three years back because of the mistake. Well, she's on her. Um, when the time regimen, so I haven't oh, seen her. She's out of time. Check is in the mail. Um, and, and I want to go back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, when she brought up the flat ground road, um, when they we're talking about the money that we're getting from the state to work on the roads, or Europe money, or whatever they call it now. Yeah. <clears throat> um, she was told that that wasn't germane to what was talking about at town meeting. And at that time, the chair of the Warrant Finance Committee got up and explained to her that, that was a private road. And so the town had no um, jurisdiction over that road. Well, <clears throat> this is an example of uh, misinformation uh, over time because the flat ground road is a town road and when this private road stuff started uh, it was more of a personal agenda by certain people in town uh, to make sure that they didn't do any more work on the flat ground road and the reason why I say that the flat ground road is a town road is because March 12th, 1960, the town voted to close it. And there was an amendment made at the town meeting uh, that would be closed subject to bars and gates. And my understanding is what that does is it gives the landowners permission to work on a town road to maintain it so it still be passable because as you know the general public can't go out and work on a town road right. the reason why it was closed was because of the bridge on the other end of the flat ground road needed to be repaired and uh, at that time according to Richard Ham who was Slutman at the time Wakefield didn't want to come up with the money and that was 1959. So 1960, liability purposes, they closed it. And hopefully the intention was to get together and get some money so they could put the new bridge in. As people uh, went through public office, it got kind of left by the wayside. When my mother and father moved on to the flat ground road in 1966, the town started maintaining it again. Um, the slutman at the time said that it was a town road and people were living on it. You had no choice. Just like uh, the Nason Road, we used to close that and the people moved on there, we started maintaining it. Hams Hill, I remember sliding down that as a kid uh, they used to go up and plow into Richard Ham's yard and turn around and come back out. Uh, same thing with Buzzle Road. <clears throat> but as you know, once people move on these town roads, you have to start maintaining them. There is an easement for the flat ground road. Unlike quite a few roads in town that we maintain already. Uh, there's a three rod easement uh, the whole length of the road. And 
that was recorded in 1862. And um, so the easement's on the road. The town owns the road. If the town didn't own the road, they wouldn't have been able to close it. All right? And they took care of it for 40 years. And then when the private road stuff uh, got voted out because of the state's ruling. Because uh, of the Supreme Court ruling. Yeah, uh, the flat ground road was on that list. It never should have been on that list. Um, I can't find any documentation where the town owns the road, per se. Mm -hmm. But as you know, six years ago, uh, there was a whole list of roads that went to town meeting. Um, that the road committee couldn't find any documentation of when the town accepted it. And it was a whole list that they wanted the town to accept. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, that didn't happen. Um, so I guess what I'm asking is um, I want the town to start taking care of the road. It's a mile and a half to the last house. Um, I've been taking care of it for 10 years. Um, I'm getting older. And I, I think that um, I mean, I, I would gladly give you any information I got. You can check with MMA or the attorneys uh, to see whether I'm not a, I'm right or not. I honestly believe I am. Um, and I, I haven't brought this up before because I didn't want to get into the personal agenda stuff and things like that. And... Um, I think it's time. There's quite a few houses on that road now, and uh, and honestly, it's getting too much for me to um, maintain. You know, I mean, if <clears throat> if we had to hire it out, it's a mile and a half long. I mean, that's about six thousand dollars just to maintain in the winter time. You know, if you put it out to bid in ten years, that's a lot of money. Uh, say nothing about the gravel and the summer maintenance we do to it. Um, so I would like to know what your thoughts are. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. Um, I know we went through this a while back with Hebo Hibo because the town had voted to close that one down and somebody wanted us to open it back up because they had a lot in there they wanted to sell and they couldn't sell it because it wasn't wide enough and all sure. this other stuff. And, and we looked into it and, and, and we couldn't and we didn't. But under the... I mean, it was closed before we did all this new zoning for private roads becoming public roads. Right. Is your road capable of, does it have all the requirements of, of the town roads under the new zoning? Is it 50 feet wide? And you, you have the 50-foot easement, Ted. Yeah, okay. But as far as the condition of the road, it's no better than most of the other roads that town owns. They're really not very good. Right, but I mean, it's uh, like the base and stuff like that. When the town was taken care of, they must have done it, right? Yeah. And, and there's culverts all through it and everything? Yeah. I mean, the town might want to put some more in it, but. Yeah. Um, and see, this is this is the thing. When they, when they did the road ordinance, there's certain terminology in the road ordinance that had to be there for clarification, Okay. And I don't remember the whole story about the Hebo Hybo, but if the town abandons a road or discontinues a road, mm -hmm. then the town doesn't own it anymore. Mm -hmm. If the town closes a road, they still own it. Okay, so that must have been done at a town meeting, correct? And, the, and that when they closed it, they must have done it at a town meeting. And what March twelfth, like I said, March twelfth, nineteen sixty. Okay. <clears throat> I could have told you what article it was, but I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Well, I have no problem looking into it. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's fine to look into. Um, you know, the fact that the town closed it does tend to believe that they could possibly own it. Well, they, so, couldn't, they couldn't close it if they didn't own it. <laughs> A lot of things were done way back, you know. No, that's true. Differently, but, 
Yeah, no, I get no issues at all looking into it. Yeah. Um, like I said, the easement sale. Yep. That's that's registered over the over the York County Commissioner's office. Yep. Easement to the town of Acton. Yeah. Yep. There's another another key part. So. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm all in favor of looking into it. No. Yep. They make any promises, but yeah, we'll. No, but I. I you wanted to get in in time to have Definitely. it on this year's warrant is what you're after, right? Uh, I, don't I don't think it needs to go to the vote of the town meeting. I mean, the selectmen have the authority, um, just like... Um, Where the town closed it, the selectmen have the authority to reopen it? The town did reopen it by their own... Um, by maintaining it for 40 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they, I don't remember a town ever voting to reopening a closed road. Mm -hmm. I, th for some reason, I th I believe that, like when we was closing the Nason Road, you had to do that every year. That was a winter closing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't know, Ted. Okay. Well, I don't know, but that that terminology is very important. And this is why the terminology was used in the ordinance, because uh, it was too liberal in the past. And the word closed just meant the town owned it. You know what I mean? They still owned it. And the purpose of the subject to bars and gates was so people could maintain it. Okay. And in, in Hebo Hybo, we discontinued. We didn't I believe we discontinued it. Okay. All right. And I think that's why. There were several roads... Uh, Winchell Orchard Road, that back end of it there, I think we discontinued that one also uh, a few years back. Uh, it was different roads that were pretty bad off. and uh, It probably would have been better if, if uh, when they used to plow the road, they used to just turn around in my mother and father's driveway. Old John Winchell used to and Roger Lasky. Uh, I never could figure that out because it was an easier place another hundred feet up the road, but uh, they only went as far as the house. And uh, they started working on it in, in the spring of 66 because uh, Victor got stuck down the end of the road turning the bus around. And uh, so he had some gravel hauled in there so that he could turn the bus around. Um, but I'd appreciate if you guys would just check into it, and and uh, I, I I think before it's done and over with, if nothing is done, I think it's going to probably end up in court, and it's going to cost people down there money and cost the town money, and and the different cases I've heard in in the state, uh, the town's lost. Uh, two cases I know about, so. I would just like to get it resolved, and I'm sure you're going to get some flack uh, when people hear this, but um, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks. But there is one more thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to the beginning. As you know, I like to wander. <clears throat> when Mrs. Snyder said, no, she doesn't own out there where the water is, I also found out um, back in 1864 that uh, Great Falls got permission to flood that and put those dams in. So that's why the property goes out to where the main stream is. Oh, okay. Because that's all. Because it used to be land. It used to be land, and there's a road that goes out across that swale on my property. And I never could figure out why would there be a road out there. Well, that was before the river was flooded. So uh, that's, that's just some little interesting thing that they got permission to, to flood that whole area. But so you know, we. Um because she came in so many times, we taxed that property as low as possible. We right. sent, we sent um, O'Donnell's out there several times, and we taxed it as low as we could. So I think the three years we paid back, it ended up being, what, $12 a year or something like that? $12 total for the total. three years. Oh, $12 total for right. the three years. So 
I don't think we've increased your tax bill too much. Well, uh, my understanding, uh, I've heard a rumor mill that uh, the, the feds might buy that off you. Buy so, but, so I might check into that. Buy the land? Yeah, that's out on the river there. Oh, really? For along what? the river, you know, conservation. Oh. Uh. So maybe I could get, before Obama gets out, you know, half a million dollars or something. <laughs> Thank you. Well, let us know if they make the offer so we can raise your tax bill before you get the money. <laughs> Thanks, Seth. All right. Anybody else have anything else? No other business? Announcements, dog licenses um, due by the end of the month, correct? 30th? Yes. All right. If there's nothing else, you have anything? I do not. All right. Nothing else? I'll entertain a motion. I move that we adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Yes.